In a war of nations unprecedented in its sheer scale and volume of manpower, when one actually takes the time to zoom in, there are simply thousands of small untold stories that make you say, that really happened? Well, it did really happen, and in today's video, we're taking a look at Otto Skorzeny, a man with quite an illustrious career to say the least. Born 12th of June 1908 in Vienna, Austria, Scorzini's middle class family was bridled by a long and honourable history of military service, and the young Otto Scorzini was no different. Although by historical reports he wasn't a particularly brutal, racist or menacing person and he himself was of Polish descent, Scorzini still opted to join the Nazi party in 1931, as it's likely he just wanted a war to fight before he got too old to do it, and a war he did indeed fight. His military career effectively started in 1938 with the Anschluss, and when the Austrian president Wilhelm Miklas initially resisted the invasion politically, he was placed under house arrest, only saved from mistreatment by Scorzini, who used his influence and charisma to charm the Nazi party into allowing the men to simply retire from politics. As the war progressed and the German war machine was gaining more and more momentum by the day, Scorzini initially decided he wanted to volunteer for the Luftwaffe, however he was deemed too tall and too old for the role. With that, Otto Scorzini briefly joined Leibstandarte SS Adolf Hitler and acted as a personal bodyguard for the men, before eventually being transferred to the Eastern Front in 1941 at the start of the campaign, which he was more than happy to do. Scorzini fought in several battles in the depths of the Russian winter before in December of 1942, after more than a year and a half of fighting, he was hit in the back of the head by shrapnel and evacuated to the rear for treatment. Following this, he was awarded the German Iron Cross and given a staff role in Berlin where he started developing commando tactics for the Nazi party. Scorzini, by this time around 34 years old, played a hand in developing a total of seven special SS operations that were meant to change the course of the war, and two of them most definitely did. When on July 25th, 1943, Hitler's friend and ally Benito Mussolini was arrested by his own people as a result of a vote of no confidence, Operation Oak was underway. On September 12, 1943, after months of planning, the extremely volatile operation was underway and Scorzini, along with 16 other SS commandos, used gliders to traverse the rugged environment and somehow, despite the known unreliability of gliders in World War II, landed almost exactly where their target was and surprised the heavily armed Italian guards so much so that the position was taken without a single shot being fired, and Mussolini was hoisted out and rescued by being taken to Germany. One of Scorzini's other successful operations was Operation Grief, where as many of you may know, English-speaking Germans in stolen jeeps and American uniforms infiltrated American lines to spread confusion and chaos. This worked like a charm, and even when the Germans were captured, they spread a rumor that Scorzini was leading a raid on Paris to assassinate Eisenhower, which led the American general to spend Christmas in isolation for security reasons. As a result of this, Eisenhower ordered an all-out manhunt for Scorzini, distributing wanted posters all throughout Allied territory. At the end of the operation, however, 23 of the 24 English-speaking Germans were captured behind enemy lines, and 18 of them were ultimately executed for espionage. In 1945, when Germany was beginning to crumble, Scorzini was promoted to Major General and tasked with the defense of East Prussia. Due to his loyalty throughout the war, Hitler awarded him the Knight's Cross. However, as we all know, Germany ultimately fell and Scorzini was sent straight to trial. Mainly arguing the defense of Operation Grief, where prosecutors wanted to charge him for breaching the rules of war by using deceptive methods of espionage, he was eventually acquitted after a former British SOE agent testified that the British had also used stolen enemy uniforms behind enemy lines. Scorzini was then detained at an internment camp, however in 1948 was able to escape with the help of three former SS soldiers dressed in military police uniform. Scorzeni then hid out in a farm in Bavaria for five years until he reignited his fighting spirit and became a military advisor in Egypt, recruiting other SS men to train the new Egyptian army under Mohammed Naguib. 
And the icing on the cake for this video, and likely the reason you clicked on it in the first place, was his eventual recruitment to the Israeli intelligence agency called Mossad. Initially, Mossad had started to develop a plan to assassinate Scorzini. However, at the last moment, they decided to recruit him instead. They figured having a man on the inside would enhance their ability to target Nazis. After visiting Otto Scorzini at his Spanish home, who mind you was expecting to be assassinated by Mossad, he was surprised to find them offering him a job, and for unknown reasons he just accepted, ultimately playing a large role in the death and arrests of high-ranking Nazi scientists still in the hideout. All in all, the life of Otto Scorzini is one shrouded in mystery and questions, so many of his motives still remain unclear and he seemed to be working for both sides at once. On the one hand, helping fellow SS soldiers escape to Latin America, but on the other hand, killing Nazi officials hiding out on behalf of Mossad. So as per usual, let me know your thoughts on this morally grey man. He was definitely one of the most interesting soldiers of the war, and I'm glad I made a video on him, thanks to the recommendations of the comments. And just before you guys go, if you are enjoying the videos on this channel, it is extremely appreciated if you go check out our Patreon, as that's the main way we can make revenue on an environment such as YouTube, which doesn't take too kindly to history videos. So I want to give a big thank you to my current $50 Patreon, I Married My Cat, and my two other loyal patrons as well. So if you want to access a special behind the scenes discord and access a whole bunch of perks and make sure you check out the patron link in the description below. Anyways guys, as always, thank you for watching and I hope you learned something new.